Fear not, Scranton. This is Pastor Elliot Cook from Jackson Street Baptist Church here to remind you that God loves you. I have a passage here today. It's from Luke chapter 2. And uh, to set it up, I, I would just ask you, have you ever seen a courtroom? When somebody's fate is about to be determined, what they like to do is to have all the evidence presented. They like to have all the witnesses come in and share their understanding of the facts and what happened. And then a proper determination can be made either by a jury or a judge. Uh, the community gets together and has these legal proceedings. And it's so important to hear from witnesses and they have to give uh, testimony and swear under oath that what they are going to say is accurate and true. If your life was in the balance, if your life were on trial, you'd want that, wouldn't you? Well, um, Jesus had that as well, and you do have that about the faith, the Christian faith, dearly beloved. I'd like to start in Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 21. On the eighth day, when the time came to circumcise the child, his name uh, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary uh, took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And as it was written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. He, it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's anointed. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts, and when the parents brought the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon uh, blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and uh, to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce uh, your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84 years old. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Um, you know, Mary and Joseph were just going through uh, the religion, their Jewish faith. They were practicing it, and they had to, to bring the child. They had to have him circumcised. They had to do the purification. They had to make sacrifices. They're, they're going through that. And in those moments, God is, is giving them more information. He had the angels, he had the shepherds, and now he has Simeon coming up and blessing the child. Uh, that wasn't on the agenda for the day, but it was the most important thing that happened. Yes, they had to fulfill all righteousness, and they did. But Simeon was a witness, witnessing that he was indeed the Messiah. Uh, a man who was anointed, a man who was uh, compelled by the Holy Spirit, a man who was a prophet, uh, and then a prophetess later on also comes up. And these are two very important witnesses. And it wasn't just one witness, it was two witnesses. You know, you had, you had the man and a woman uh, coming up and bearing witness 
that this was indeed the salvation of, of all of mankind, that the Messiah was born. And it's, it's so important to have that witness. You know, I'm witnessing to you now. Uh, perhaps you have a Christian friend who has witnessed to you. It's important to weigh the evidence. You know, you have life. And that life that might last 70, 80, 90 years, in that life you have to take uh, and decide what you're going to do with Jesus. And there is evidence out there, you know, the Holy Scriptures, certainly the most important evidence, but there are historical documents as well uh, that talk about the historical Jesus. What are you going to do with him? You've got to get all the evidence out there. You've got to search through it. You've got to witness, you've got to listen to the witnesses that God has placed in your life, whether it's your sainted grandmother, whether it's a pastor, whomever that's been sharing with you. Identify uh, what is good evidence and what is not good evidence. Consider it all and then make your determination as to what you're going to believe about Jesus. Did Jesus die on the cross for your sins and are you forgiven or are you rejecting that salvation and if you reject it then you'll have your 60 70 80 90 years and that will be it for you uh, that's what you're doing when you reject Christ of course the Christian teaching is that there is hope for eternal life in glory you know, with our Father our Heavenly Father and many who have gone before to live eternally uh, in a place of paradise, in a place where, where there's blessing uh, for all eternity. I did give a message uh, this past Sunday on hell. Hell is for real. Uh, the truth is you will live for eternity, whether you believe in it or not. The question is where, what your address is going to be. Will you live in glory, in paradise, in heaven, with God the Father, or will you be separated from him in hell for all eternity? The choice is yours, and it's what you choose to believe about Jesus. I'm a witness to you today. He's real. He's powerful. He's God. He died on the cross for you. If you've heard this message before, and you sort of have believed it, but never really prayed the sinner's prayer, never turned your heart over to him, perhaps you would pray this prayer with me today uh, to repent and become his child. It's a simple prayer. It takes many forms, but perhaps your need is, is to pray the prayer. Won't you pray with me right now um, in your heart, in your mind? Father God, I am a sinner, and I need salvation. I need forgiveness. I repent of my sin. I don't want to participate in sin anymore, Father. Uh, forgive me and, and help me, Father. Free me from the, the sin that so easily entangles and help me to walk rightly. From this day forward, I am yours. And I want to live for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just became a Christian. And you did so because of the evidence that was presented to you, perhaps today. If you did pray that prayer, let us know down below. You need a Bible, let us know. You have questions, write them down. You know, engage with us. You only have so many years. You only have so many opportunities. I don't know how long I'll, I'll be putting these messages out there. You know, someday there may not be anybody witnessing to you and available to answer your questions. And then it will be too late to ask. So ask now while you can, please. And don't, don't think that you have tomorrow. Tomorrow is promised to no one. None of us know what tomorrow will bring. And that's why it's so important to to get this done, to make your decision now to trust in Jesus. I pray that you've done so already. And God bless you if you have. You know, we have nothing to fear, those of us in Christ Jesus, no matter what's happening around us. The world could be falling apart, um, but this is a temporary place anyway. God has a better place uh, prepared for us. And those of us who trust in him, he will bring us through. He is with us. He has not abandoned us. He has not forsaken us. He has not forgotten about us. He loves us. And uh, I pray that you know that and you are in him. If you're not, please decide soon. You may not have much longer. God bless you, Scranton. Remember, fear not, Scranton.
This is Pastor Elliot Cook signing off from Jackson Street Baptist Church.